Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the South Castephen series, 83 parishes surrounding the town of Grantham in southern Lincolnshire, which are full of history. Let's check one of them out. Welcome back to South Kest Stephen, everybody. It's still a glorious day out here. The hat and the shades are still very much on. Now then, this one is basically two settlements, two settlements which come together to form one parish. This is the smaller of the two, which is where we'll be starting. You might just be able to see in the distance over there, here, there's a church, and that's the main thing in this place. We're going to drive through this one because it's very, very small, and then we'll head to the other one, which is a bit bigger. This is Gunby and Stainby. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Today we come to Gumby and Stainby, a parish which contains the two villages of the same names, Stainby being the slightly larger of the two. This is a predominantly rural area dominated by farming. The only major road here is the B676 Buckminster Road, which crosses the parish from west to east. The boundaries extend a considerable distance to the west of the villages, as far as the Lincolnshire-Leicestershire border, which forms the western edge. The west of the parish was the site of Buckminster quarries, which mined ironstone for around 100 years. Operations ceased in 1972. There is now little trace of that industry, and now out here is all farmland, located over those former ironstone workings. The eastern extent reaches not quite as far as the A1, because the River Witham forms the boundary. The south is delineated by nothing more substantial than the ancient field lines dividing the parish from North Witham. The land to the east between Stainby and Gumby is gently undulating. As villages go, Stainby and Gumby are each founded around minor streams that flow north towards Colsterworth and into the River Witham. This drive-in is around Stainby, not the easiest place to navigate. We'll be walking up this narrow, shady road later. We'll also be seeing two churches, an old school, a beautiful little stream, and lots of gorgeous properties. It all sounds very good to me, so let's go. We begin in Gunby, the smaller of the two settlements. Our first landmark is the church, which is Grade 2 listed and of 15th century origin. It was rebuilt by Richard Code in 1869. Only the perpendicular tower remains from the original structure. It's dedicated to St Nicholas, and that fact gives this village its full title, Gunby St Nicholas, which I would imagine is only used in formal situations. Its tower is of three stages and features a battlemented parapet with corner pinnacles, although one is missing. All of its interior fittings, including its font, are 19th century, with Gothic woodwork including the font cover and the tower and chancel screens. It wasn't open, nor was it all that easy to walk around due to its elevated position and its very small churchyard. From this churchyard, though, you can see most of the village. I don't know if this little patch of grass in front of it really passes for a village green, but at least we can say it's in the conversation. 
To see a bit more of the village, we're off for a little drive. The name Gunby means farmstead or village of a man called Gunny, deriving from an old Scandinavian personal name. It should not be confused with another village called Gunby, which is close to Spalding. That one is where you'll find the National Trust's Gunby Hall. This, the South Castephen version, is nowhere near as grand. Rather, it's just a pleasant little cluster of residential properties that line two main roads. It used to have a pub called the Blue Fox. That's the house you can see on the left here as we head up Stainby Road. The house has the name carved into the stone lintel of its main doorway. Let's head for Stainby now, which was recorded in the Doomsday Book as Stiganderby. It's slightly larger than Gumby and contains the remains of a mott known as Tower Hill. The two villages used to be separate civil parishes until 1931, when they were abolished and merged together to form what we have today. Okay, so here we are in Stainby, which is a bit bigger than Gunby, and we're beginning the route at the parish notice board, so we can get this out of the way straight away. So there we go. Gunby and Stainby is in the books. Let's go walking. Stainby is very similar to its smaller parish counterpart, in terms of property at least. This is Middle Street, which bisects the village from north to south. The village is on the B676 road, which runs between Melton Mowbray and Colsterworth, which is frequented by heavy goods vehicles from the nearby industrial estate at Soston, and by vehicles heading from the Midlands towards East Anglia. The village itself, though, is generally sited to the south of that road, and it's relatively quiet. As small as it might be, believe it or not, it used to have a railway station. It was on a small, single-stop branch line from Great Ponton, which connected it to a main line. At the bottom of Middle Street, the road meets Water Lane, and alongside that is the stream around which Stainby was founded. It's a pretty little watercourse, which, as far as I'm aware, doesn't have a name. Both this and a similar stream at Gunby, though, flow in an easterly direction, eventually draining into the River Witham. Okay, so this part of the village you've already seen because this is the narrow tree-covered um, road that I tried to drive down in the intro and uh, unfortunately that car had to reverse for me. I, I couldn't reverse, there was nothing behind me I could pull into but he had something he could so that was helpful I suppose. It's quite, uh, it's quite narrow this lane to uh, say the least. It's not the easiest of roads to drive down. And of course, with it being covered in trees, it's very dark and you can't really see what you're doing. You do need your lights on coming down here, I'll be honest with you. So uh, yeah, I'm going to follow this. As you already know, there's not much on it. There's um, the occasional house on either side, but that's really about it. It runs up to the church, which is what I'm heading for. Next landmark on the corner. And then when we've got to that, we'll take a right turn afterwards and head back to the start. Stainby is not the biggest village in the world. Absolutely not. But it's still bigger than Gunby, isn't it? After passing the site of Tower Hill, which is on private land and inaccessible, we're now climbing a shallow slope. Water Lane becomes Hall Lane at a bend, which leads directly towards the church and the rectory. That's this big house you can see right next to the church. Aside from the church, the rectory is perhaps the most impressive property in Stainby. It dates back to the 18th century, but was altered in 1804 to some earlier plans by William Lumby, and was then refronted in 1888. No longer a rectory, it's now a private house. The church, dedicated to St. Peter, was thoroughly restored in 1865. It can seat 120 people. Now, because Stainby has no shops or a village hall, the church is the only community building here. It has no heating, no water and no toilets, and is kept warm by way of four gas heaters. Annually, the church hosts a pet service and flower festival, which is always followed by a picnic in the churchyard. Below, I've linked a little website I found, which shows some images from the 2019 edition of that event. And directly across the road from the church, you've got this building, which is the old school, which is just as architecturally fantastic, isn't it? Loving the, uh, this here, there's like a little crest there. There's some writing on it. Can't read it from this distance. I'll see in a moment if I can get a bit closer and maybe tell you what it says. 
but there you go that is Stainby and from here it's a simple case of walking back straight down this main road to where we began and that's the parish of Gumby and Stainby so it turns out what was written on the old school was written in Latin and I can't understand Latin or at least not much of it but I, I can understand numbers and 1840 was the, on the bottom panel if you like so I think we can probably assume it means it was built in 1840 <laughs> who knows As we discussed earlier, both Gumby and Stainby are within an area which has been for years heavily quarried. Whilst a lot of those quarries have now ceased to be, the mark they've left on the landscape has been put to good use. One quarry in Stainby is a fine example of how industrial land can be reused. These images here are of the Nottingham Land Rover Club, which uses the former quarry to provide off-road events throughout the year. The Stainby site can be found just off the road to Colsterworth as you leave the village to the east. They don't just use Stainby though. Reading through the club's blog on their website, they also tour around the north, making use of other sites like one at Tickhill near Doncaster and at Frickley Colliery near South Emsall in Wakefield. They often use Stainby on the May Day bank holiday when Land Rovers turn up in their droves for a long weekend of off-road action. I don't know about you, but it sounds great fun, to be honest. And there you go, folks. That's been Gumby and Stainby. It doesn't half make me think of home, what with all the surrounding farmland. We'll be back to this area again soon for the likes of Buckminster. But next week, we're heading north to a place which some of you might know if you attempted one of my Guess Where I Am locations a few weeks ago. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out